Okay, now let's uh, paint some water. So we'll continue on with this little scene that we're kind of developing here. As I come down this way here, then let's say, let's say I'm going to put in like a little stream here that's going to go to the back and maybe flow out this way. Water is the sky. So what I need to do is actually carry the sky back down into the front part of my composition. And so I'm just going to take some of my sky colors that I had here. And it doesn't have to be an absolutely perfect, uh, you know, um, represent or, you know, reflection of the sky. You just have to get some of these colors here. So I had some of my, my dirty blue uh, grays here. And you should, you know, like if you see a cloud in here, we'll get some of that light in here as well. But you should have some of that. But let's just say that we're going to have this gentle little water coming down this side here. Okay. And so we push this in here. And let's just take a little green and let's just build this all up here first. Some more here. And... You know, the other thing is, you notice I always paint with a model brush, and I I paint pretty quickly uh, here, and I'm going to get a little darker because that's what we know is going to happen as I come forward here. So we know that's going to happen, and we'll just let this soften out here, here on this side. I'll let that soften back here. So just do a little setup here. It's kind of... You know, I didn't want to take up a tremendous amount of the book painting each because it'd take too long to paint all of them within the book. We don't have that kind of time. But you can, by using, seeing some of these techniques, you can see how you can get some of this, these looks. So the water is going to be coming forward here like this. And again, it is really just the sky. Now we will have a little bit of our greens reflect against the edge here. So we want to keep up against if you have a green bank you want to put a little bit of that green into the into here we're gonna have a little darker color here so we'll put a little bit of that but the the water is really the sky and the ground and everything put together now we're going to have some of our um clouds up here so let's just take our cloud brush here our number four and let's just add some of that into the uh, water here and let that kind of fade. Now as the water goes back, it's going to get lighter as it heads to the horizon here. We know that that's going to happen in the distance. It's going to become more and then more details and stuff you'd find as you come forward here. And we'll grab just a little more color here. Pull this forward. I love to use my hands when I paint because they, you know, they, they set up nice movement without setting up too much strokes and stuff. So I'll set up a little bit of that. So the water is starting to develop here. And, you know, you can do these really quickly if you understand the concepts of it. We'll bring the water and the ground kind of together back there. And uh, you can really put in definite lines like I did in here in this one back here. You can really put in some definite uh, light lines here. Not too harsh of a line because that will uh, advance it. But water can, in, in the receding part of it, will have a lot of light way back. As it comes forward or as it approaches you, it's actually the, it's going to get quite a bit darker. Now, when you paint water, a lot of times you want to pull it across and then you pull it down. So you pull, and, and pulling across adds the movement. Pulling down adds the stillness to it. So if I really want to soften one, and I'll show you another painting here where I do some water, this water that I put in here, it looks very, very still. And that's because all the water, of course, the water's close to us here, so I'm going to use a lot of darks. And I don't really have a receding line here, so I won't have a real light water against the horizon line. But the water is pulled down. Pulling the water down, uh, what that does is it stills the water, calms the water down. And so uh, little hor horizontal movements here add movement to it. So if you want to get a lot of movement to, to water... 
uh, you had a lot of horizontal movement here, uh, like on this one that I did here. Again, heading back here towards it, I'll get some light movement. Um, but adding some horizontal movements of the brush this way will give you movement to the water, whereas pulling down, like we did on the other one, adds uh, a stillness to it. And that's an artist's choice, how much you're going to do. So uh, we will put a little bit of light here up against this. And then what you have to do is start looking for your darks. So if I put, say, a dark here, and then I want to express that dark equally as dark here into the water. Uh, and so as you really come forward, let's just darken this and let's even just put a shadow in there so we'll cool it. We'll take a little red violet and a little bit of our black into that green, which will give us a nice dark cool. And you see the dark color that I'm, I'm applying in here is going to advance this part to the receding part here. And then I'll need to make a statement of this as well here. And we'll pull down and we'll push this this way. We'll put a little bit of this dark up here. Say we're gonna, we'll paint a tree or something up here in one of the next technique things. But we can pull down here, which will push that color across using your, your hand and stuff or, or brush, pull down and pull across, which helps this starts to settle down this, this water. And when you look at uh, this painting that I have here, that is still under, I'm still working on it. You can see where I put quite a bit of the dark and some of the other colors that I'm, I'm pulling here from the, from the surrounding area down into the water reflections. And we'll talk about reflections, but I'm moving it in many different ways. I'm moving it this way and I'm moving this way, but I'm keeping this tonal difference. It doesn't have to be exactly the same color, but you need to put it, uh, uh, you need to put uh, some of these colors in. So water, really, and, and we'll, we'll soften this up here. I'm going to soften this cloud just a bit here. But water is really the sky repeated down again here. And you, as you can see, you can start seeing some of this. Let's just toss in a little bit of more color here. Uh, back up over here. And uh, we'll soften that back here just a bit and bring this forward and so we'll we'll paint like a little stream right here this way and you can see once you understand you know how the landscape can look you can actually drop in land and water pretty quickly and then you can just start to define up a little bit more let's just take a little dark right here and We'll just kind of put in some colors and usually up into the very front like this this is where i'll really kind of grab my palette knife and grab some of my colors especially my darker colors as i come forward here and i'll model it up and this is where i really like to to add some colors in here and i scoop some of this up and get some of these colors going in here and get this nice darker contrast here and let's get some more greens in there again. Here. And this that you're putting on like this, uh, you know, of course, you can paint it down, soften it down, paint it down, do whatever you want here. But if I'm putting any kind of ground in here, it's this contrast that's really going to bring it forward. So, even, And it's the undertone of it. So here you see it's very dark. It's an undertone before I even start any of that painting uh, here, you know, to bring it forward. Here you'll see there's that real dark, dark, dark undertone here that's going to bring it forward and allow me to paint against the light. So, you know, you really need, when you look at this, uh, you really need to have that, uh, that, that, that color there. Let's just move that right here. You really need to have some of this dark and, you know, model this all up. You need some of these darks and these textures and all this stuff going on here. And that's going to cause this to really come forward here. And then it's slowly going to soften into the light as it goes to the back here like this. And then we'll build other, you know, things up here like that. And so you see everything here is becoming, 
going into the distance, becoming like my set horizon line here as I'm setting this off. The other thing that's very important when you're painting, of course, you get paint all over your hands, but the other thing that's very important is that, you know, artists, when we set up paintings and stuff, we try to use wedge shapes. Wedge shapes are shapes of movement. So these, you know, I always like to see wedges of cheese moving down. And so wedge shapes here help your eye move from the larger shape to the smaller shape, which helps you give more visual perspective, okay? So there's more things to water. There's reflections and the water's edges and stuff that are really going to need it. We'll use those for the other techniques. But right now, when you go to block in your water, you block in your water with the sky. The look of the sky okay that's the big part of it put some of those clouds in there and get some of those darks up along the shoreline then we'll we'll paint up some more water with some reflections and um some of the uh, shoreline and stuff we'll do that in some of the other techniques but the base of water is the sky see you in the next technique